It's all about vibration and frequency. Those two things and the electromagnetic field that's created from those two things is changing right now. Changes for you sure know. in the way humans are thinking. So you wonder why people are scatterbrained. There's a lot of people freaking out. They can't handle the, the state change that's going on. There's a vibrational frequency change happening. The frequency they're held in or were born in, it can't hold that frequency state. And this is the reason they're losing their minds. Why is such psychosis today? And it, it's kind of permeating through the, the fabric of society. And I literally mean the fabric, the base vibrational fabric of society. Investors could still see some of the strongest price action in gold this year, according to Wells Fargo, which sees signs of a developing rally. Money managers believe we could see inflation reach new levels that we have not seen since the Jimmy Carter era. For centuries, investors around the globe have turned to gold in times of economic uncertainty. Gold supplies have flipped from excessive to deficient. And such times in the past have sparked some of gold's strongest price rallies, unquote. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. And you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver. And the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs Top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 until present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. We are repeating cycles of time. And you know, t the, the cuneiform texts talk about what were previous societies on Mars. And then the tech was so good that they were able to jump planets and recolonize a different planet here, Earth. But what, when we go to the next star system over, if we jump off out of our own solar system into the next closest star, the next closest two or three stars, you know, we really don't get a lot of information or ancient texts about what existed in terms of orbits in the planets and civilizations on those planets interconnecting with our own, except for sci-fi. You know, and then, then you start to really wonder, the 500 years of marauding, Vatican, pillaging all artifacts, centralized into a few hands, a few libraries, a few museums. What's the true story about what we know about off-planet? And when I say off-planet, I should say other, other solar systems, other stars and orbiting bodies around there we've interacted with. You got to go to the sci-fi realms. You know, another thing I was thinking of is there's another show, and, and it happens to have the white-blooded android fake uh, living creatures and people too. It's, it's Westworld. But I was just thinking in that show, they kind of have that scenario you were talking about. It seems like at their point, at least in that show, they could the, the elite couldn't convince human beings, which I don't think they could at this point, or at least this generation with the knowledge we have, that they're gods. We wouldn't buy it. I think we would ask too many questions. We're that kind of people. However, you know, maybe they got tired of messing with humans like because we wouldn't worship them as gods, and then they'll just make their own people little automatons that think they're human. And uh, even in these shows, you notice they always put the robotic or android or synthetic life form having a bunch of emotions and having an obsession with their creator, which is humans. So it's like another another one of those things through Hollywood that they're trying to indicate that, you know, they want to be worshipped as gods or they think they're at the God point. That's what I'm saying. I don't think our generation would buy it. I don't think somebody born in my time or your time would buy it. I don't even think I can believe if I saw a flying saucer crash right in the street in front of my house and some kind of alien thing came out of it, I would still question it because I think human beings now possess power enough to fly around like that. And I know we know Genetics, I'm, I wouldn't doubt it at all that they created something that would look alien that could sit and pilot something and try to fool me into uh, giving up whatever last freedoms I have. Yeah, you bring up the point. And when I say that, no BS assessment here. There is an enormous amount of electrogravity technology. The proper term for it is electrogravitics. And if you want to look into that area of study, you know, Nikola Tesla, Marconi, you know, the wireless radio, 
they all were into that circa 1920, 1930, pre-World War II. You know, you hear Marconi and you, are, you understand the most famous thing that what's Marconi remembered for, wireless transmission of signal, but their apex of what he and Tesla were working on together was anti-gravity technology. But we're talking in the 1920s and they were using opposing spinning disks and I do believe it was 1,720 RPMs opposing, and they got some sort of weightless effect. Well, fast forward in World War II, and after the Allied forces marched into Germany, they found an enormous amount of these rings, if you will, that had chains on them that had tethered something that was working with the same electrogravitics. And you tell me that from 1940, and you know Dr. Brown in the 1960s perfected that, and now we start to see a few other things in the skies. I believe almost all of it that we're seeing is ours. But I will say the same point again that I harp on again and again and again when I talk about electrogravitics. If we had the technology for the last 80 years, let's say, I'll even say 50 years. Let's just say back in 1980 or something, 1970. And we had the tech perfected after they found it in the 40s. Airplanes? We would have no need to even really buy a ticket at that point, except for some operational costs for individuals. There'd be no fuel cost for it. Anything to deliver, there should be no cost for that either. Either running rail across the seas, you could speed that delivery because it's weightless, so you don't need the fuel. And if you did, it would be such an insignificant amount to move an almost weightless object. Your cars, the way everything is powered, Oh, yeah, and mention power. One of the uh, the benefits of having the opposing spinning disks, if you put some copper on that, it would create electricity as an off charge. So you'd have free power for your homes, businesses, factories, forever, in perpetuity, never need to buy electricity ever again on a centralized system. But then we can go the flow back. There'd be no copper cables up there. And you could daisy chain this back as far as you want. And think about the effects on your life and generations, the effects on generations, if we would have had free power and almost no delivery costs and almost no manufacturing costs except for the base inputs. Because even the mining machines, you know, there's a lot of weight involved with moving rock around on a mining site. So imagine if you could take that into a weightless state, electrogravitics. And I'm going to say until my dying breath that this is a suppressed technology that is probably going to pop out. And that's the reason for a lot of release of the UFO documents and all this stuff the CIA is trying to release. Two million of those documents, two million pages. There's 10,000 pages in that packet devoted specifically for electrogravitics. How these things float. They might call it float, move, hover, whatever you want to call it. But it's using the electromagnetic technologies, I should say, that have been hidden from a lot of us. The, I'm the same rant. So if one crashed out in front of me, I would say, welcome. Uh, let me go see how you're, I want to see what powers that thing and bring it into my house, reduce it down and have free power for the rest of my life. You know, when we talk about that, it's not even that far-fetched. The fact that the government has a whole list. You could go check it out yourself and just look this up. There's a whole list of inventions and next level technology that go back a hundred years that the government has been taken away from the inventor banned. they call them disruptive technologies anything that would forward the cause of you know individual liberty and power and i mean power like as in being able to power to create and live and not pay bills they will outlaw it and they have been doing that for anybody to doubt that they're, they don't have next level technology is kind of naive to me. And the fact that there's been so many eyewitnesses of things in the sky leads me to believe that somebody or something is in fact flying a lot of stuff. Now for me to say it's an extraterrestrial, I don't know about that. However, I don't discount the idea. And then also our government seems to be pretty convinced that there was at one time at least um, extraterrestrials on the planet. And if you read any of the writings of the ultra elite, you can take your pick of some pretty famous names. They all believe the same thing. And then when you get into, you know, ancient tales of the Sumerians, um, and even before that, they're talking about gods. Every primitive civilization talks about gods that look just like men. They live, they die, they bleed, they have children. Tells me they're biological. So either they're a different type of human being that one time had uh, high technology or 
it is in fact extraterrestrial or interdimensional. People like to be pretty fanciful with ideas, but you don't have to really get all that fantastic to see that it's very possible and most likely a possibility when you just look at the evidence of previous human beings on Earth. They still haven't even explained why Cro-Magnon walked out of wherever it walked out of completely modern as a human being with no lineage that they can find on the earth. I mean, not really. They try to link us to apes and different things. However, there were these other humans that have hundreds of thousands of years of history in the bone and fossil record. So we know they were here, but you don't know. What about modern humans? They just kind of pop up. And then since we've been here, we've been I'm going to say devolving. We've been coming. Our bones are less dense. Our muscles are less strong. We're we're uh, mentally inept compared to people like, say, in the Renaissance still or even you can even go back 200 years and people's IQs and intellect would far outmatch people of today. And I hate to say that because I'm one of those people that live today. But I know that I couldn't compete on an intellectual level with some of the people that lived in the distant past. And these people were agrarian societies all the way up until about 150 years ago. Agrarian societies. And every time their agrarian society failed, their whole civilization collapsed, just like you said. It's all about the food. And we're at that point now. And I was wondering, you know, we talk a lot about the future, but I'm going to go ahead and reach out on a limb and say that the time for being prepared is like today. If you're not prepared today, you're probably five years late, but, you know, there's still time. But I, I'm saying that we're going to have to go through hard times, whether it's elite created, whatever you want to talk about, or, you know, we have some things that happen that are just out of our control, like the sun, the galaxy, the planet, you know, we could have a new volcano that just burps so much stuff in the atmosphere. We have what's equivalent to a nuclear winter for decades. It's a possibility right now. If you're looking at the greater scheme of things, could you fault the human race for living in a lower magnetic field? And when you talk about these electromagnetic changes that affect the electric charge that is in the hemispheres of the brain, where we sit right now in terms of how strong our field is on the planet compared to 200 years ago, we're down substantially about, what, 35% lower magnetic field than what 200 years ago somebody in the early 1800s would have been living in? And if you go further back in time, the stronger the magnetic field it is. And, and as we wander toward this, A, either onset of a new ice age, or B, a magnetic, I, would, I don't know if I want to call it an entire polar flip, but huge wanderings of the magnetic field, loosening of the magnetosphere, this affects us as the human resonant field as well, electromagnetically. So you got to think about how does the brain function, and we all are, we're taught in school, and we all pretty much know it's electrical, but you got two hemispheres, you got the right and the left, creativity or more of the engineering side of analytic side, but that's affected by the charged state going into it. And agrarian societies seem to put their hands in the soil where they can discharge. They can also resonate and uptake depending on where the crustal, I guess, composition of the minerals is. So you look at the agrarian societies, and of course they were more intelligent. Depends on how you measure intelligence too. But think about that, putting your hands in the earth every day, resonating with the mineral composition around, you would have a much greater connection to source with that. Because you have to think in the modern day today, I mean, you, parents don't even want their kids to even put their hands in, get back here, put that and wipe that down and spray that down. Heaven forbid you eat dirt or go walk around barefoot without them freaking out, the kids today, you know, the parents. So think about the changes that are coming electromagnetically. Like, look at this unusually high lava fountain that's coming off Iceland. I don't know if anybody's seen the video. I'd highly encourage you to watch the video. We're, we're used to lava fountains. And when you see a lava fountain, you know, it's usually, I don't know, 100 feet tall, maybe. Like, Etna's a really good one. You see the stuff shooting out. But you can't tell me that this thing went up 1,500 feet straight up and just made this gigantic... Roman candle coming out of the mountain. That was the most amazing video that I think I've seen for volcanism in, in quite some time. These are the electromagnetic changes that are here. Our crust is going to get loose. We're going to see a lot of pipeline breaks, a lot of bridge rips, a lot of railroad tracks going awry, and a lot of road cracks. And people are going to try to say, why is that happening? Well, the, of course, the mainstream media is going to have a thousand million excuses for you. 
It's all about vibration and frequency. Those two things and the electromagnetic field that's created from those two things is changing right now to the point that it can be measured and not like fractions of a 1%, like a one nano Tesla difference. We're talking about actual full percentiles changing and not 1% down, but like 10%, 20%, 30% down. They're expecting the full resonance from the magnetic field, the primer field on our sun to be collapsing by 2030. Do you know the solar wind stopping completely by 2030 for at least periods during months or years? Can you imagine if there's zero solar wind, our magnetosphere would not be compressed. That thing is going to blow off. I don't even know what to expect if there's no solar wind. These are the changes that they're talking about. And I want to say they, I'm talking about scientific bodies, governmental bodies, central bankers are talking about it because it'll affect their bottom line. And things in between that are might go bump in the night. Changes for you sure know. in the way humans are thinking. So you wonder why people are scatterbrained and freaking right now. There's a lot of people freaking out. They can't handle the, the state change that's going on. There's a vibrational frequency change happening. And the brain was set at like 106.5 for a radio station. And it's tuning up to like 106.7, 106.8. We're soon we're going to be in the 107.3 range. The frequency they're held in or were born in, it can't hold that frequency state. And this is the reason they are losing their minds. Why is such psychosis today? It's a frequency change happening. And it, it's kind of permeating through the, the fabric of society. And I literally mean the fabric, the base vibrational fabric of society is the change that you're witnessing. This